This is more about uh, living with the uh, novel coronavirus. Things continue to open up slowly with restrictions, so many restrictions that they make it almost impossible for places to operate as a retail business, a restaurant, a gym, or a church. And people are encouraged to call the police if they see others who are not in their estimation complying with the restrictions. The field mouse remains in charge. The lady doctor clings to her numbers and her overwhelming sincerity. The reporters at the media conferences act like acolytes at some religious ceremony. They are completely passive and totally supportive of the two. I can't listen to any of it. It's nauseating, the exact opposite of the way the pack of hounds used to bay at Richard Nixon. They wanted to tear him apart. I remember Dan Rather standing up and asking a lengthy question that was not a question. Just one indictment after another, stringing them up, and when he was finally done, Nixon said, Yes, Mr. Rather, and I beat my wife. There are no wife beaters around now, only two greatly admired, nearly venerated individuals. The field mouse's wife is busy making pies. The field mouse said it was too soon for child care. He said he wanted a solid scientific basis for everything he did and the finest protocol in the nation. You want to hug the little field mouse and then shoot him and blow up the lady doctor. Self-determination is the principle at risk here. Some people take it very seriously. As one of our states has as its motto, live free or die. Many people do not think about this at all. As long as they can order what they want on Amazon, they're okay. I believe the motto of my state is, fasten seat belts. I try not to think about this, try not to pay attention to the daily proceedings, because it infuriates me when I hear these people trying so hard to take care of me. They would never believe that their diligent efforts are ruining our lives. All that talk about getting what we deserve. I think this situation is what we have earned, what we have worked very hard to achieve. It has been a long time coming with the New Deal, the welfare state, and Obamacare. What is ironic about this is that it is not an Obama or a Clinton or a Bernie Sanders who is putting the icing on the cake. It is the trumpet, a guy who was going to make us great again. And then the virus showed up, the joker. What a way to rip everything apart. And the first thing we were willing to surrender was self-determination. Speaking of the trumpet, it looks as if he has had it with the daily briefings. He stormed, of course he stormed, he is a storm. He stormed out of today's briefing, saying, don't ask me, ask China. He has a built-in limit for working on a project, and he has just about reached it with the virus. I think he is going to start talking about an end game, and that will bring him into direct conflict with people like the field mouse and the lady doctor. It's inevitable. He just doesn't have the patience to crawl through this. As is true of every bit of history, the personality of the players has a great deal to do with the outcome. Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson, wrote a once pretty famous essay on self-reliance. He considered it a singular virtue and a cornerstone of this republic. I say once famous because I don't think anyone bothers to read Emerson anymore if they read anything at all. His disciple, Henry David Thoreau, wrote an essay on civil disobedience. He considered it a necessity and the duty of every citizen. Oh, how the times have changed. Here's another number. Numbers are big right now. We are living in the age of numbers. I heard that the field mouse has an approval rating of 80%. And I heard that the federal government is getting ready to authorize another trillion dollar stimulus package. Whatever happened to self-reliance? Where is civil disobedience when we need it? The craziness 
is heating up. 